Hi coach, my name is Nadej Susanna. I go by Nan and I'm the Cravings Coach. If you want to enjoy your food with zero fear of having too much, I can help you. You're in the right place, especially because it's the end of the year, right? And we know that we're surrounded with food and there are lots of festivities, including food, right? So maybe you're just like me and you want to make the most of holiday food to ditch New Year dieting resolution. Did you know that it was possible actually to have your cake and eat it too? And by that, I mean, you could have it all. You could enjoy your holiday food and you could also enjoy a healthy, lighter body come January the 1st? Yes, it's possible, right? And that's really what I'm encouraging you to do because it feels so good, right? That may be the only and main reason. And I've created a webinar, a masterclass, that's on replay if you're interested. And in this video, in this short YouTube video, you're going to get one tip that I shared with my people during this webinar, right? And this webinar was fantastic, if I do say so myself, and it was around three main tools that I thought were amazing, that I use all the time, and that have changed my life and my relationship with food, but also my relationship with my body for the better. Here are the three tools, and as I said, I'm going to give you one in this video. The first tool is to prioritize pleasure. The second tool is to maximize pleasure. Notice the theme here, we want to have pleasure. It's not about restricting your food, or limiting ourselves, because very often when we do that, when we restrict our food, after a while, it feels so bad that the only thing that we want to do is go on the other extreme of the spectrum and eat as much as we, want, we can, and there's absolutely no pleasure there, right? It's just coming from restriction, going to rebellion, but we've forgotten the pleasure right in the middle. So the three tools are prioritize pleasure, maximize pleasure, and a third one that I really, really like, it's to delight in desire, right? So if you're curious by this end of this video and you want some more, you want to learn the three tools that I shared during this free webinar, this masterclass with my people, well, simply reach out to me and ask me for the link and I'd be delighted, I love delight, I'd be delighted to share it with you. All right, all you have to do is simply reach out to me and it's for you, it's my gift for you for the end of the year, right? So enjoy this one tool that I'm going to give you right now and I'll see you soon. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye. So the first one is to prioritize pleasure wanted to be fun, remember? The second one is to maximize pleasure. I'll tell you exactly how to do this. And the third one is to delight in desire. Sounds good? Let's go. So let's start with prioritizing pleasure. So first, I'm curious, have you ever noticed how much more pleasurable food can be when you're hungry? Hang on, I didn't say starving. I said hungry, right? So that brings us to the question, can you actually differentiate the different levels of hunger, right? Mild hunger to starvation, right? And of course, they vary from person to person. They vary from time to time, which is why I give my clients a detailed hunger scale that they can complete with their own unique specificity, their own experience, so that they can get more familiar with their hunger cues, right? It's super fun to explore, right? And it's really fun, not only fun to explore, but also important because very often we have no clue whatsoever of the different degrees of hunger, right? It makes perfect sense then because we live in a society today that sees hunger as a problem and that's trying to solve this issue at all costs. So very often we feed ourselves in a preventative manner before we even feel even a remote twang of hunger. Have you ever done that? I know I have, right? I was so afraid of being hungry that I was, you know, overreaching on a very regular basis for different reasons, different ways, but I never truly knew what hunger was. So I had no clue that there could be different levels of hunger, right? I was never hungry. So I've noticed that preventing hunger is even more frequent if we've dieted. And by dieted, 
I mean, severely restricted our food intake so much so that our bodies register that this as starving to death, right? If you're on a diet, it's for your brain, it means starvation. So if you're anything like me before I started doing this work, I was terrified of feeling hunger. So we need to gently get used to it again, ease into it again, one tiny step at a time. So to get yourself started, here's the very simple process that I recommend. Imagine your hunger like a pedestrian traffic light, right? Remember why we're doing this? So that then when you're slightly hungry, you can enjoy your food more. This is really a key, key here, all right? We're not starving ourselves. We're not depriving ourselves of anything. We want to take more pleasure in food, right? So if you're feeling hungry, imagine that the light is green. Time to eat, go and eat, right? You know with the physical signs that little by little, you'll get more familiar with. So it may be the stomach gurgling, or you're feeling slightly lightheaded, or you're noticing that your energy level is not really the same as before, right? Signs, cues depend on people on, from one person to the other one. So really I'm encouraging you to try and explore and tell me what hunger cues have you noticed before, right? So what are you saying? Yeah, low energy levels, yeah. And sounds, sounds coming from my stomach. I know <laughs> my daughter was telling me that it happens to her during math lesson. She doesn't like it for some reason. <laughs> when everybody's quiet. Hmm. Anyway, one word of caution. Sometimes we tend to think of hunger signals uh, in a different way, ha out of habit, right? So for instance, the time of day is not a hunger signal. It may be your usual time, to have lunch or to have dinner, and yet you may not be hungry. So I really want you to pay attention and to distinguish the time of the day and the real thing that's happening in your body, right? So try to pay attention and you notice how the idea that we must be hungry, right? Because it's time, must actually be different from actual hunger, right? So if you're noticing those hunger signals, then go and eat. But then, when you notice that you're no longer hungry, imagine the light from green has turned to red. So stop eating. And similarly, if you're not noticing any sign of hunger, simply don't eat, right? It sounds simple, right? <laughs> because it is. But then of course, we know that there may, there may be some objections that your brain is coming up with perfectly normal. I want you not to worry, first of all, to get it right, whatever right means the first time you try that, right? It might just be a forgotten habit that you need to retrain your brain and your body a little bit to apply. It can be done. Remember, I was a binge eater for 30 years, so I was never ever hungry. I had no clue what that meant to be, what that meant to be hungry. I was always stuffed. And now I'm happy actually to experience hunger again. Why? Because I make it mean that I managed to eat just the right amount my body needed at the previous meal. So I think it's fantastic because I take this as a signal that, yeah, I managed. I managed to get the right proportion. I got it right, <laughs> right? That's actually exactly how I do it. During each meal, I wonder, will this be the right food and the right amount so that I'm hungry the next time I eat? This is really the one question that I keep in mind. And this very simple hunger scale, am I hungry, am I not hungry? is the light green, is the light red, can be a very precious tool for you to implement so that you eat just the right amount of food at the best time for your body needs, right? Now, you may have some fears around being hungry. I totally get it. You're not alone. I used to be terrified of be getting hungry. That's why I never was for so long. That's exactly what I help my clients with so that they can get comfortable with being hungry, and remember why we're doing this? To truly savor their food. So that then they really enjoy it. They stop when they're, they've got enough, when they feel satisfied, and then they can slowly but surely get the health they want to come January the 1st, and after that too, right? So let's recap this first tool that I shared with you. So it's called prioritize pleasure. 
and it's about using this very super simple simple hunger scale. Am I hungry or not? Will this help me be hungry for the next meal? If I eat this food, if I eat this amount of food, can I imagine being hungry at the very next meal, right? And the idea is to make your experience, your eating experience, so much more pleasurable. We want pleasure. We deserve pleasure. Why not? <laughs> this end of the year, but also anytime. So this really ha is helpful. This really helps. And I'm curious if you want to share what you think about this. So step number one is all about prioritizing pleasure. 